Good morning, everybody. I, I hope everybody got good sleep last night. Um, OK, so let me talk a bit about E-Ink. Um, we're actually a company that was out of MIT Media Lab. So, um, so we actually took this technology from a lab technology to a market um, product. And it was actually on Harvard Business Review, not because of how successful we are, because of actually three times, um, because how we actually failed. Um, we actually got a lot of money from, from investors, including Intel, um, Philips, Motorola, Hertz Media. Um, we raised roughly like $200 million. And, and we wanted to do something that was great. And we w went after all different applications. And because of that, um, we're on that Harvard Business Review. Um, because we will try to chase too many rabbits at the same time. Um, and we, we go back and refocus. And we focus on our um, the, the applications that we think will create the most impact, uh, which is the e-reader. So in 2004, we actually launched the first e-reader with Sony and at the same it was actually in Japan so unfortunately it didn't really take off and we're very lucky that Sony gave us a second chance and we launched that in in US and it immediately became a great success um, and because of that um, it landed in the desk of Jeff Bezos and at that time, Amazon wasn't the Amazon of today. It was basically an online bookseller. And this is what I heard. They said that, um, Jeff actually said that if they didn't do the e-reader, he would shut down his online book business. And so, so he really believes that the e-reader is going to change the way how we read. And because of him, um, we're here speaking about, about our technology. And, and because of the success of Amazon, uh, Kindle, there was different players that entered this market and it started that whole revolution on the ebook. And, and this year, actually we show this picture of this animal because it took us 10 years to get from black and white to color. It, it, it was a long, long time. <laughs> and, um, we actually, a few years back, we actually tried doing color with the glass CFA. Um, again, it didn't take off. So you see the theme is about not afraid to fail. I think it's very important for any startup or any company to try new things. And that includes us. And we continue trying to develop new technologies. And, and this year, or actually 2009, last year, um, we launched two color technology platform. I'll talk about it later. So what is e-paper? Um, our goal is really to replace paper. So we want to design our technology like paper. Uh, it needs to be lightweight. It needs to be thin. It needs to be flexible. And it needs to be low power. So as you can see from the picture, we actually compare our technology to, to paper and put it out there. It looks like paper. And, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to replace all the paper that's out there. And in terms of what we're doing, um, what, what we're trying to take our technology to, so the first thing we want to do is to get into flexible, OK? We believe that in order to replace paper, we need to be flexible like paper. And we also need to do color just like any paper. It, there's colored papers today. And it needs to be also low power enough that you can wirelessly charge it and provide power to it. So we call it energy harvest. We try to build energy harvesting into our, tech, into our display as well. OK. So this is actually, as you can see from the video, um, we actually designed, uh, we actually built this um, rollable, flexible display back in 2008, seven, And it almost launched the product with, with Philips. It will be the world's first 
um, foldable product. But unfortunately, um, Philips spin that company out into a company called um, Polymer Vision. And, and as a startup, it's always hard um, to launch a product. And unfortunately, they didn't launch a product. But our technology is ready. Our technology can do foldable, just like the Samsung Fold. And we also face the same problem like the Fold, the crease. Um, like any display technology, um, to get a new technology to the market, you actually need to work very closely with your partners, especially device partners, in order to bring the product to market. But at the same time, we didn't stop just building foldable um, displays. We also look into how do you do stretch. Um, and we built our e-ink technology onto cloth. So hopefully in the future, we can get our technology to, to clothing. Okay, and this is 10 years ago we did this, but we're still trying to improve the technology, trying to make it better. At the same time, we challenge ourselves. If we can do it at a 6-inch, 7-inch, 8-inch, can we do it at a bigger size? Um, and this is a 10-inch foldable display. So last year at SID, um, it's a display show for, for, for our display people that we shown our 32-inch um, foldable product um, displays to see whether we can take this technology from a smaller size to a bigger size. And the goal is one day that we can put that into walls or, or, or like replace your wallpaper because, you know, it's, it's paper. And so, as we develop the technology, we st first start out with the um, two-particle system. It's mostly black and white. Then we introduce a third color. Um, we call it spectra. So either you can have red or yellow um, inside the um, white and black capsules or, or cups. And, and we target that, the three-particle system for the ESL system, electronic shelf labels. Some of you might have seen it here in U.S. in Best Buy. But it's quite popular in um, in China and, and Europe about adopting the electronic shelf labels. And it's another applications for IoT. I think it's quite interesting. I'll talk about it more later. And last year we introduced our our full color um, e-paper displays. So we did with three particle, then we moved to four particle, um, and we actually. You know, like for to do color displays, most people do it with RGB. But since we're trying to replace paper, so we did it with YMCK, just like print. And so, and you look at an e-ink e display, it, it, you get the feeling of like a magazine or, or paper or, or newspaper. And that's what we're trying to do. And yeah, so, so you can see from, from the um, slides here that um, today we can only get to roughly the print newspaper quality, but we believe that there's still room to improve that to, to real magazine type color. And that's what we've been working on. Another technology, um, since we also had customers coming to us and said, hey, I want, I want my e-reader or educational tablet um, to be in color. And the color doesn't need to be great, but it just needs to be good enough, um, especially for the educational market in China. So in China, they're, they're st they have this 10-year program that wants to translate every school. The first three years is actually to get every school onto the internet. That's the first stage. And the second stage is to get every content um, to be digital, educational t content to be digital. The last stage is to get every student to carry um, an educational device so they don't have to carry a heavy book bag. 
And, and so we actually work with our customers and say, look, they, they like our ASAP, our ACEP color, but they think that the speed wasn't fast enough. And there was a lot of educational content that plays video. And, and, so, and so we actually did a new type of color. Instead of using a glass CFA, we actually print the color on top of our micro capsules. So, sorry. So, so the focus here is really to, to create the e-paper that the speed will be fast enough to play video. But the color isn't as great as ASAP, but it still serves the purpose of you know, playing video in the ed educational environment. Sorry. And when people talk about low power and they ask us, how low power is e-ink technology? So, so we actually did a comparison chart. So if you were to put an e-ink display indoor and, and play it for, I think it's four hours, a one e-ink display is, uses one battery and an LCD would need 30 batteries. That's how low power e-ink display is. But if you were to put it outdoor, um, it's 120x in terms of low power. So actually there were customers of ours that actually uses the low power advantage of e-ink and combine that with solar power to create digital bus stops. So no longer you need to dig um, wires of, on the road to, to, to pull the power instead of just power purely from the solar power. Of course, it needs a battery in case there's no sun. Um, and, and it's actually happening in, in Europe. It's also happening here in US, in Asia, and everywhere in, around the world. At the same time, we're, we're not just satisfied with our low power. So we're looking at ways how we can have an e-ink display where you can just snap it on the wall anywhere without worrying about power cords. And so we look into how do you do energy harvesting with e-ink displays. So here's a video that there's no, there's no battery on the display, it, you purely get the power from the source, which is the RF, and you power the display and transmit the data at the same time. And so today, um, some of the places you might have seen e-ink, um, there's people using e-ink for, for watches, um, like Timex, Epson, and different players. Um, they like the low power benefit of e-ink, and there's also use of e-ink in the logistic world um, because then you can use energy harvesting to power the display and you can replace paper tags um, with e-ink. And also badges and, and also in transportation, uh, luggage tag. Um, so recently I believe Lutanza, um, Austrian Airlines, Swiss Airline, Eva Airline in Taiwan China Eastern Airline and Southern China Airline had launched logistic tag using e-ink displays. And also um, in, in retail and also in educational and also in signage, transportation and hospital. And as we talk about replacing paper, so if you look at some of these applications, it's all about replacing the paper that's out there. And and so, so we want to mimic that look and feel of papers. And actually, peop, some people actually create eNote with this uh, digital note-taking device. Um, there's a startup in, I think it's in, where is it? In Finland, actually, called Remarkable. And they, they created this device that, that looks like paper, uh, and you can write like paper, and feels like paper. And, and they've been quite successful. Um, they actually raised a new round of funding last year um, to, to further expand their product lines. And also there's 
there's an use of ink into classroom as well. Um, and one of the benefit of ink is that it's easy on the eyes. Um, unlike LCDs, it shines directly at your eyes in order to emit light. Um, e-ink is a reflective technology, so it actually reflects like back to your eyes. And, and that's one of the reasons why it's well like in the educational space. Um, some people even want to, like Livono, they built a yoga book, Gen 2, um, that actually combined an LCD with an e-ink dis display with it. So you can write and, and type on top of it. And because of the success of Remarkable in 2017, um, there's more players that enter this market um, with a digital note. And you can see from last year, there's roughly 20 plus companies doing Eno-based products for, for, for offices or for education. And because we're trying to replace paper, we're also in the retail space as well. So there's a picture below there that compares an SDN LCD with e-ink display. It's actually a real e-ink display that's roughly, I think, 10 inch. And it's, it's used to mostly to, to show the price of the product, but at the same time, as the size gets bigger and bigger, it becomes more of a signage product. And that's what one of the reasons when we launch ASAP is to target the retail space. So next week in NRF, that's a show in New York, um, it's the biggest retail show. You're gonna see a lot of players showing price to electronic shelf labels. And it solves a main problem of large retailers because as, as Amazons get more competitive, or I guess that's the right word, um, traditional retailers need to be able to change your price instantly. And if you have uh, 500 stores or 100 stores, it's very hard for you to change pricing like when it's online. You can just change it because it's online. But when you have a real physical stores, it's really hard to change your pricing. And that's why a lot of retailers are adopting um, e-ink displays. Um, Dansbury and, and I think in UK, Tesco, Walmart, and also Amazon itself. And logistic tags as well. Um, it leverages the advantage of battery free. Um, as people know, that because of Samsung Note 7 explosion, we actually had a product with Remoa, I think it was back in 2016. And it was, it, it, was, it was very well liked by a lot of airlines. But unfortunately, it had a battery inside, a coin cell battery, which is, which is allowed by um, the airline industry. But because the Samsung phone exploded, um, that didn't take off. So it really forces us to look into our technology and say, hey, could we get rid of that battery? And, and we came up with a solution that's battery free. And again, it just started to be um, attractive for, for airlines to start adopting these. And we also got our display, because we're flexible and low power, we're able to get into our, our display into credit cards as well. Um, so um, in, in Europe, a lot of banks that they issue credit cards with e-ink display, it's mostly a, a three-digit OTP product. So it replaces that USB that you have to connect to your computer um, when you want to do online transactions. And, and we've been selling millions and millions of these display every year. And here in US, um, there's this company called Reviver that uses e-ink to replace car plates. Um, it's a startup, but it's quite interesting. Um, they want color because back then we didn't have color, so they started with the black and white. And the idea is that um, most people has to go to DMV to, to change to get that sticker. And, and having a digital plate, you no longer have to get a sticker from DMV and wait in line. And the idea was that in the future, 
um, when it's in color, then you can start doing advertising when, when the car is parked, which is quite an interesting concept. <laughs> well, I guess you don't like it, but it's, it's quite, <laughs> it's, it, it might not be for everybody, <laughs> but it's, I think it's quite an interesting concept. And, and of course, bus stop signs, um, it's happening. So if you go to Shanghai today, all the bus stop in Shanghai has been changed to e-ink displays. And because of our reflective nature of our displays, um, our display has been quite well liked by hospitals. Um, hospitals want to go digital. Um, and they've been using LCDs, but one of the problems using LCD is that it emits light. So it's very uncomfortable for, for, for patients, but the information needs to go digital. And, and so they start approaching us and say, hey, can you offer an e-ink display um, for bedside signs or, or different signage product within hospitals? Um, this is a new market that we're also looking at. Um, we're getting quite a good traction in this space as well. So in all, we believe that our display, um, because we're trying to replace paper, um, it's, a, it's an ideal display technology for the smart city and IoT. IHS Market estimates 22.9 billion IoT devices worldwide by 2030. Many of these IoT devices need low power consumption displays to act as human machine interfaces connecting user and smart services. E-Ink e-paper is considered to be the most suitable display technology in IoT and smart city applications. E-Ink e-paper is always on, low power consumption, paper-like, easy on the eyes, sunlight readable, wide view angle, flexible and shatterproof. In smart transportation, e-paper displays applied on smart bus stop signs with solar-powered systems, allowing the bus stop signs to be free from the power grid. It contributes to lower total cost of deployment and operation. Easy and quick installation minimizes the impact and inconvenience caused by construction and installation. Smart retail evolves with IoT development. E-paper electronic shelf labels, ESL, becomes the top choice of smart retail. Dynamic and instant pricing change, inventory control, customer interactions can all be realized through smart retail solution system and ESL. Creating values in O2O interactions and increasing operational efficiency. E continues optimizing battery-free e-paper solution for smart logistics applications. Images can be updated via NFC and UHF wirelessly. While reducing the use of one-time use paper tags, it also helps to optimize operation efficiency in logistics management. E-paper in smart healthcare. E-paper can be found on medicine packaging, bedside cards, and medicine storage management. Updated information is sent and displayed wirelessly through HIS. Realizing paperless operation and management in smart healthcare environment. E-Ink's advanced color e-paper display technology mimics the printing quality of transitional paper. ACEP is suitable for signage applications in retail, education and healthcare environments. Images of paintings and artworks can also be recaptured with ACEP. Diverse applications are to be expected. E-Ink e-paper, an ideal display for smart city and IoT. So, um, so in terms of business model, so, um, so E-Ink used to sell E-Ink display modules ourselves only. Um, for the past few years, we actually start expanding our ecosystem. So today, you can buy E-Ink display not just from E-Ink, but you can buy from 
um, Holy Tech, BOE, DKE, and, and different vendors. There's going to be more to come. So the idea is how do we enable the e-paper technology into, into the market and start replacing the paper? Um, we work with IC partners such as MTK, uh, and NXP, and, and different players um, because we need our e-ink um, timing controller built into the, the SOCs. Um, at the same time, we work with different ODMs and OEMs as well to create products that best fit the need um, of end users. So, so our model has really changed. We start enable more ecosystem partners together um, to replace the paper. Um, this is actually a new technology we just developed last year. Um, we call it Just Right. So it doesn't need any electronics or, or TFTs. It needs a very simple electronics and it's quite interesting. So basically, um, again, the theme again is to replace paper. So we want to be able to write on ink display directly. Yeah, so, so the technology is actually quite simple. Um, we added magnetic into our ink. So using an electric, well, magnetic pen, then you can directly write on top of the ink displays. And so without TFTs, it makes this product um, super cheap. At the same time, if you connect that with the TFTs, or this is actually without the magnetic ink, it actually uses a color filter, the printed color filter we talked about earlier. Um, you can see how we actually improve the speed of, of the ink technology. This is a vision of ours. We're still working on it. We haven't gotten where we wanted to. We're still building these building blocks. So, um, so our goal is to get eventually to get e ink everywhere. Um, and you can see from the video, we want to replace wallpapers as well and build in our e ink display technology to any possible um, surfaces, including um, ceramic tiles or, or textures. Um, we believe that with the 3D printing technology that's out there today, um, there's a lot 
and there's still a big market that we haven't targeted yet. Thank you.